Hey Pit Masters, what is up? Today we're going to be grilling a steak, but first we're going to inject it. What? Yes, that's right. We're going to stick a needle in it. You know, I always look for inspiration and in coming up with new ideas of cooking. For instance, we did the frozen steak experiment, we did the deep fried steak experiment, and I was thinking injected steak. And a lot of you guys may already know there's something called whiskey injected steak. And if I remember correctly, it was uh, Winston Churchill's his favorite steak. Um, but I was thinking, I don't know, I don't know. You got these sausages that are stuffed with cheese and they're so good and creamy. That's really a good idea, but injecting steak with whiskey is like, eh, I don't know, it's ordinary. So I was thinking, what do 90 to 95% of the people eat their steak with? I think most people eat their steak either with ketchup or mayonnaise. But I, I have to admit, Sometimes, occasionally. You eat your steak with mayonnaise. Yeah, just a tiny bit. And I think in the past I've done it too. What if we inject our steak with mayonnaise? I thought that was a good idea. But then again, we might fail with this experiment. So I came up with, maybe we should also try ketchup. And maybe, just, uh, just to be sure, come up with a more safe plan. We're also gonna inject our steak with bacon, grease that we've rendered down. So we know one of these three is gonna be a winner. We're gonna try three of them and we'll just see how it works out. I've got a beautiful Rubia Galaga as a steak. It's dry aged, 42 days old. But look at the marbling on the steak. It's absolutely beautiful. We got some beautiful rendering, perfect for our project. We're going to cut the steak into three pieces and we're going to try and divide them with the same amount of meat. All right, let's start working on our experiment. I want to be injecting our steak with ketchup, mayonnaise and bacon. So we can't inject the bacon as it is right now. We need to render this down first and get the flavors and the fat and catch it all and then inject it. I got my Napoleon Professional Char Grill ready and set up. My charcoal is already lit up. It's nice and hot. We're gonna put our pan on it. We'll add some bacon strips to the pan and let the fat render down. And when it's rendered down, we can start using it for our injection. The first needed, of course. Okay, so you gotta try. You don't think so? Mm. I've been playing around with some syringes to inject this with, and I had some of these laying around because I thought it was a good idea to inject fruit with alcohol, which works fine, but when you put mayonnaise in it, it's like really hard to get out. It might actually work. And the ketchup, let's give that a try. Oh yeah, that's gonna work as well. Now we're gonna try the bacon. Before our bacon fat solidifies, we're gonna inject it quickly into the steak. And then gently pull back. I'll just try and get as much as I can in there. Yeah. It works, it works fine like three minutes ago. I'm so happy that I ordered a thousand of these. <laughs> yeah, that was the batch of order. I couldn't get them any, uh, any less than that. <coughs> it doesn't work. And when it doesn't work, we scale up. Luckily, I got my backup injection. This is a proper injection needle for barbecue. So we'll just shove it in there and get that ketchup all up. Whoa! <laughs> Wait, what? I think the steak had enough ketchup. Look at it, look. It, it, Am I safe here? I don't know, not sure. Let's move on to the mayonnaise. There we go. Holy sh... <laughs> it's on my face, right? We need to try again. You see, it works fine. What? We're just gonna have to put some effort in it. I'm so scared too. But it's in the name of science. Do you regret it? No, 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 no. I think this is the way you find out if things work or not. Come on. Have you ever had 
you know, injected steaks with uh, bacon, ketchup and mayonnaise? No. Do you think it's a good idea, Mozon? No. But do you want to know which one is best? Yeah, but you are going to try it. Oh, of course I am. Of course, that's my job. And when one is good, it's mine. We'll place our steaks over indirect heat. Do you think uh, Gordon Ramsay already left the chat? Our steaks are almost at 40 degrees Celsius, so it's time to start searing these things. This is the steak with the bacon grease in it. We'll sear off our steaks, and when we've got that beautiful Maillard effect, we'll take them off the grill and let them rest. Man, these look good, they look good, but you definitely instantly can tell the difference. With our bacon fat, you have a nice crust, but you clearly can see that the meat is still intact. With the ketchup, on the other hand, we see that there are some burn marks there. That's because of the ketchup, it has a lot of sugar in it and it will burn easily, especially on a hot grilling surface. With the mayonnaise, we got a crust as well and a little bit of burn and maybe even a little bit more than our ketchup. We'll let these steaks rest for around five minutes, then we're going to slice into it and find out if it makes sense to inject your steak with ketchup, mayonnaise or even bacon. Can't wait to find out, man. Whew. Meat review time. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Look at our bacon steak. I can't actually see any traces of fat though. Or at least bacon fat that is. But it definitely looks good to me. It does look a little bit shinier than normal. Now let's give it a try. Tastes like a steak. Just a little bit greasier than normal, but you can't really taste any bacon. Morrison? I'm doubting myself. Do I taste it or not? I can taste it. It's a, it, there, it's a little bit more greasier than normal. Yeah, that's about it. But it's not like you it's not like whoa, this is bacon steak. So we'll move on to our ketchup steak and we'll slice it up. So let's take out a slice. Wow. There's definitely ketchup in there. Definitely ketchup in there. It's completely red inside. Well, it's a ketchup steak. It's not bad at all. After the bacon, I didn't expect as much flavor in there, but it's just crazy. Is there so much flavor in the ketchup? Want to try most one? Yeah, I'm not so sure. I think you do want to try. I think you really want to try. What? No. It tastes like steak with ketchup. Yeah, that's the problem. We'll leave it at that. If you like steak and ketchup, give it a try. Now I am really amazed because we couldn't taste the bacon. We got a crazy amount of ketchup in the flavor. What is the mayonnaise gonna be like? You almost can't see it. There's just a little bit here. Nothing visible, but almost nothing, except for the crazy crust we got on the outside. Now, without further ado, let's eat this thing. It's greasy like the bacon, and there's a little hint of mayonnaise, but it's more like you can feel the grease around your lips and things like that, but you get the creaminess, but you don't get the mayonnaise flavor. I'm missing the sweetness here. I'm really missing that nice mayonnaise flavor, but Definitely a good crust. Mm. Your turn, Morrison. There's nothing there. You, you just have that creaminess that you get from the mayonnaise. Like uh, your mouth is super creamy. Just kind of like dissolved and stayed in position and the egg white stayed in one position. I like to play around with these things. It's almost like a creative process and figuring out what works and what doesn't and why it works and why it doesn't work. Like, the bacon fat, it, it wasn't there, uh, waste of time. The mayonnaise with the creaminess, but you never get the flavor. And it's kind of interesting because why does the flavor disappear? And why do you keep the creaminess? And what if we, re, we use mayonnaise in a way where we heat it and keep that creaminess and have it in a dish uh, to add like a richness to it? It really, really is a cool idea. But injecting your steak with mayonnaise or bacon doesn't make any sense. But the ketchup really was there. 
it had a lot of flavor. It's completely different than the mayonnaise. It's not based on fat. It's more based on a vegetable and water and sugar. And things like that really stand out in a steak. So I think there is an opportunity still there to inject it with something that works, even though you might not like ketchup. It's kind of an inter interesting thought of what can we inject our steak with and what actually works. So Morrison and I sacrificed in the name of science to figure out what flavors work injecting in a steak and what doesn't. And we made some good progress, but we might be back with a sequel to figure out if there are good things that we can inject into a steak as well that absolutely make sense or not. Please let us know if you liked our little experiment or we need to stop now and it's over. Throw in the towel, quit it. Leave a comment down below. I'd love to find out. I want to say a big thank you to all of our patrons and our YouTube members. You guys freaking rock. Hope to see you all next time. Until then, eat smakelijk and keep on grilling. Zeg maar wat je nodig hebt, maar regel het maar. Hey, Pitmas, what is up? Today we're going to make steak. Oké, okay, let's go. <laughs> Best intro ever. I like big blocks and I cannot lie. Die is wel de brandskin ding, hè? Hey?